investment banking, my time as an investment banker. In this video, we are going to discuss my time as an investment banker and my experiences. The prior video discussed my experience at CIBC World Markets after I graduated from Cornell University. In this video, I'm going to discuss my time at Petsky Prunier or PPLLC. Petsky Prunier is an M&A boutique, which is one of the most prestigious boutiques on Wall Street. It primarily deals with direct marketing, does a lot of M&A transaction, capital raises, works directly with private equity firms to engage in strategic and financial sales to the financial sponsors or to a strategic partner. So when I left CIBC World Markets, I was provided with an offer and an opportunity to work at Petsky Prunier. Initially, this was fantastic because coming from the Industrial Growth and Services Group at CIBC, I was able to get my work done extremely quickly. Then I transferred over to the Financial Restructuring Group. I then received my bonus and was offered more money to join Petsky Prunier and I seized the opportunity. In general, I believe it's very important to move around rapidly when you are a young junior banker. So when you're an analyst or an associate, it's in your best interest to move around to different banks because not only will it provide you with an opportunity to meet a lot of people and to meet senior bankers, and as long as you do a good job for them, they will vouch for you later on, but it will also save you time and also increase the amount of money that you can make. For example, you can get a promotion. Let's say you're supposed to be spend three years as an analyst. You can leave after two years and if you interview and they want you bad enough, they should be able to, their new hiring place should be able to shave off a year and make you a first year associate as opposed to you staying in your existing job and completing your final year as an analyst. So as I said, I highly recommend that you move around relatively frequently and that's what I did when I joined Petsky Prunier. Now in this situation, I worked directly with Sanjay Chada, who in my opinion, Besides Carl Torillo, he's probably one of the best bankers that I've dealt with. He has extremely strong attention to detail. He is the powerhouse behind probably, well, at least when I was there, the majority of the deal flow that was done at Petsky Prunier. Him and I worked very well together in the beginning. We formed two person deal teams and we completed, I don't know, if you, compl if you include Healthy Advice, which is a company out in Cincinnati, probably around 500 to a billion dollars worth of transactions. It was very lucrative if you include all of the M&A and then some of the raises and things like that. But in any case, um, Sanjay Chada and I worked, her, worked directly together, which is relatively uncommon because at that time I was still an analyst. I wasn't an associate. So it showed that he held me in very high regard. However, at this time I was still promoting nightclubs. And the reason I started promoting nightclubs is because when I started working, at CIBC and I transferred to the financial restructuring group, I was leaving, for, I was working from nine to five. And actually during the day, I wasn't really doing much. And because I still had the skill set that I developed in the industrial growth and services group at CIBC World Markets, I was able to get my work done extremely fast. And I was also a little bit cheap. I didn't want to go out and spend $20 on a drink and to get a girl into a club in Manhattan, or I didn't want to spend $30 for entry. I remember telling my mom that if I ever made any money by promoting nightclubs, I would be extremely happy. Well, it turns out that after a little bit of hard work and by applying the same principles that made me a good investment banker, as far as being organized and being reliable and hardworking, then you can actually make a lot of money in nightlife. And because people go out, and it was very common for them to spend like four or five thousand dollars on a table, whether it was at like home or guest house or marquee or Lotus or PM lounge. They would spend awful like a god, like a godly amount of money on tables and I would get a percentage of that. So it wasn't uncommon for me at 22 years old to make five thousand dollars a week in nightlife. And yes, I had some expenses, but I probably netted around four thousand dollars a week. And for the majority of the time, all I had to do was send out emails, go to a few events, and I was able to sleep with so many girls, like beautiful girls, girls from like Ford Models, Wilhelmina, Elite, 
I mean, like, and with no effort, because when you have such high relative social status and you walk into the club and you give the bouncers a pound and they know who you are and you just walk in and they see you and you can get anyone in to the club without waiting online, it just elevates your social status to such an extent that you don't even have to put in any effort. I would not wear expensive clothes. I'd wear the same thing all the time and I could just walk in. People knew who I was. and there would be like four girls at the table and I would have slept with like three of them and you never would have known because I would be friendly with them and it was just a really fun time. But the problem is, getting back to my original story, is that because I was making so much money doing nightlife, the I, I, Sanjay didn't like this and Petsky Prunier didn't like this because investment bankers want you to be 100% committed. They view any outside work or outside interests as a potential threat to your loyalty. So this loyalty that you're expected to provide to the firm is not reciprocal in nature, meaning that they expect you to give 100% loyalty. But if for some reason you make a mistake or they find someone better, they don't hesitate, especially when you are at a director level or even like a second or third year associate, they really would not hesitate to let you go. As an analyst, you have a lot more leeway, but they won't hesitate to let you go, but they expect you to give 100% loyalty. And for me, since I was making more money as a nightclub promoter than I was making as an investment banker, I really didn't give a shit whether I was, I just didn't really care as much as the typical people. And also, a lot of my coworkers started getting very jealous. So they started asking me questions like, what am I doing this weekend? And I would go out to the Hamptons, but I would just say, oh, nothing, I'm just staying home and reading. And then a few things, uh, something happened where someone sent one of the emails, because I, I had around like 10,000 people on my email list at that time. And they forwarded my nightclub email to one of the owners and founders of the company, John Prunier. And then he contacted me about this and he was like, what is this? What's this about? So John Prunier, he's a little bit of a tight ass. Michael Petsky, who is one of the other founders, he's a really, really cool guy. Uh, he's a good family guy, he's fun. But John Prunier is a little bit of a tight ass. I, I had a decent relationship with him. Sanjay and I mostly work together and I had a decent relationship with him, but I never felt that Sanjay was very comfortable with me having outside interests. And this came to light later on because one of the girls that I was seeing at the time, her name is Christina Celestino. I met her at Suede Lounge, which was on, I think, 20, 23rd Street between 7th and 8th Avenue. I met her on like a Wednesday night and she just radiated positivity. I remember when I walked up to her and I asked her for her email and then her number, she was like glowing. She, um, she was a very beautiful girl and she radiated positivity, like I said earlier. And I was just instantly attracted to her. So we started seeing each other. She, at that time, she was going to Fordham. And I actually brought her on the company cruise at Petsky Prunier. Now, my relationship with Christina only lasted about two months because she brought a friend or she couldn't get into Marquee because she was underage. And I was a jerk at the time and I said something really rude to her. And I remember what I said, but I don't want to say it because I feel like a dumbass. It was really, really rude what I said. And I kind of regret it, but... Anyway, so she kind of like dumped me. She wasn't like interested in me in there anymore, but we, we remained cordial. And she came to the company event that we had where we sailed around Manhattan at Petsky Prunier. Then I found out that a month later, Sanjay got a table at a lounge called PM, which is a pretty exclusive lounge. Um, it was, it's, I think it's on the corner of like Little West 12th Street. It's not there anymore. I know that one of the, the nightclub owners uh, Chris Rita took it over and I forgot what he renamed it. But in any case, Sanjay got, a, Sanjay got a table and then he hit on my girlfriend, Christina. I mean, at that time she wasn't my girlfriend, but he like he pretty much was like, she told me that he was standing around the table with bottle service, uh, dressed in a suit and walked up to her, gave her his card and was like, hi, I'm Sanjay. You know, so like these guys have no game. What they do is they use the prestige that they have at working as an investment bank. They've sacrificed 10 or 15 years of their life in order to become a vice president or a managing director. And then they just stand around. They have no fun. They're complete tools. And then they hand out their business card to girls. And actually, the weird thing is he actually met her previously um, because I brought her on the I brought her on the cruise. The weird thing also is 
Sanjay at that time was dating a girl, and I think that he, he actually has married her. Her name is Allison. I met her once, and he's married to her, but at that time, now again, like I don't want to like start any problems or anything, um, but I'm just telling you what Christina told me, that he was pretty aggressive in hitting on her at PM Lounge while he was dating Allison, who he eventually ended up marrying. But in any case, um, so at this time I was like 22 years old and I was making a lot of money and Sanjay didn't like this and because bankers use fear in order to intimidate you and when they want you to work at like 10 or 11 or midnight, they tell you and insinuate that if you do not comply with their orders and you don't make the necessary sacrifice, then your bonus is going to be negatively impacted. But for me, considering that I was making a lot more money as a nightclub promoter and I was able to have a lot more access and social status and sleep with a lot more girls, so it was actually fun, I really didn't care so much about the investment banking job, which in hindsight was a big mistake. Anyway, um, one time I remember when they flew us to San Francisco and then John Prunier acted like they were doing us by such a like such a huge favor because they put us up at their hotel and we went during the weekend and he probably spent around four thousand dollars but the problem with that is what john didn't realize is i actually gave up a few thousand dollars by going to san francisco so he wasn't doing me any favor by flying me out to san francisco to go to a marketing conference and then having me walk around and give my card to everyone in the booth in order to generate business and then when I kind of insinuated and told John that I was doing him, a, that I didn't want to be there. And again, I was also booking tables on my phone during this time when I was on the call and that pissed off John and, and Sanjay. And when they spoke to me about it, I was very straightforward with them and told them that I didn't have a desire to be there. Uh, it's not my job to generate substantial revenue for the company as an analyst. And I told them that I was also sacrificing thousands of dollars by going there. And um, there were other people who called out. I remember Colleen Filippo, she called out and she was able to not go. But for some reason, if I called out and I told them that I would rather go to the nightclub, then I guarantee you it would have been a huge problem because they did not like that I was promoting nightclubs. So if I told them that I was skipping the San Francisco trip in order to make an incremental few thousand dollars, they would have viewed that as me choosing nightlife over investment banking. And I guarantee you they would have docked me like 10 or $15,000 on my bonus. So I knew that and I decided to go to San Francisco, but at the same time I was continuing like booking tables and sending people to the nightclub and they got really pissed about that. Another thing is um, they, in 2006, they hired a banker, Matthew Pratter. At this time, he was a director. I think Matthew Pratter graduated from University of Pennsylvania. He was a pretty smart guy, but he just, he was super annoying. He would stutter on all the conference calls. He would give a very poor presentation. And in my opinion, he was just, he was annoying as shit. Like he was so freaking annoying. Him and this guy, Jim Toohey, were very annoying, but Matthew Pratter was like even worse. Like he would just, continuously turn documents and um, I just I had no respect for Matthew Crowder and I spoke back to him a few times and uh, Sanjay told me that at one point that I was disrespectful to him but I just didn't care because this person was so freaking annoying and now he's actually a managing director at Petsky Prunier but unless things have changed and it's been a while, I mean, at that time he was stuttering all the time on conference calls. I, it was almost like humorous that this person was a director Yet Sanjay would not work with him on deal teams because Sanjay had more trust in an analyst than he did in his own director. Yet the analyst was getting paid three or four times as much money, or rather the director was getting paid three or four times as much money as the analyst. So the, the reason I'm saying this is that investment banking is not a meritocracy. The people who win and who make the most money are not necessarily based upon merit or how skilled they are. Rather, it's predicated upon how much time they've invested and how much they have sacrificed to the industry. So at that time, Sanjay had substantially more confidence in me than he did in Matthew Crowder, yet Matthew Crowder, since he had been working as an investment banker for 10 more years than me, and he was getting paid around three or four times as much money, San like Sanjay chose me, yet Petsky Prunier was not compensating me nearly as much as they were Matthew Crowder. 
So I kind of didn't really like this and that's one of the reasons why I've chosen more of the entrepreneurial route because when you work for someone else, you better love it because even if you're more skilled and more capable than your bosses, they are going to reward the boss and give the boss more power based upon the boss's experience and their prior experiences. So it doesn't matter how capable you are, they are still going to take advantage of the new hires of the analysts and the associates. They're going to underpay the analysts and the associates and they overpay the directors and the managing directors. The reason for that is a very small percentage of analysts and associates become directors and managing directors. They can afford to underpay the analysts and the associates so that they overpay the directors and the managing directors. I had a big problem with Matthew Crowder, as I said, and I made a big mistake. In 2006, during the summer, I was working late one night while I was working on promoting things, uh, you know, sending out my email, adding emails to my email list, and I actually missed a flight to Boston the next day. I remember we were working with a direct marketing company. They used to buy direct, um, I forget what the name of it was, but it was near Boston and I missed the flight and that was, that was on me. That was a huge mistake. That was probably the biggest mistake that I made during my entire time as an investment banker because that's pretty, it's black and white. I just, I stayed in the office until two o'clock in the morning. I went home, I had to wake up at about 6 a.m. I was sleep deprived and I missed the flight and it, it was a really bad experience and that was on me. And that actually caused me to not get promoted. So even though I had made no mistakes that entire year on the financial models, Sanjay told me during the review that they felt like they couldn't trust me 100%, that I wasn't fully dedicated, and that was the reason why I didn't get promoted. And as a result, I told Sanjay during that meeting that I was gonna quit. He then told me to give him two or three weeks and that I can go on interviews because I was staffed on a lot of deals and they wanted time to find a replacement. So that's what I did. And I eventually found another job within about two or three weeks at another investment bank and everything worked out well. But I can tell you that, do I have regret? I, I'm not sure. I think that in the beginning when I joined Pesky Prunier, I really loved it because it provided freedom, but then they started implementing a lot of changes. So every week at nine in, nine in the morning, we would have to, everyone from the office would have to sit down and in a conference room and go through the deal, the deal sheet and provide updates. And I thought that this was a complete waste of time. We would sit there from nine in the morning until 10 a.m. Uh, every single week. This was implemented around late 2005 or early 2006. And in my opinion, this was a complete 100% waste of time. So the more structures, and the more regimented structures that companies put into place, the more that they take away your freedom, the more sacrifices they require of you, the more that the junior bankers feel as if they are not being compensated well enough or they feel that they're being underpaid so that the directors and the managing directors can be overcompensated. I think that these situations, the greater tendency that banks have to exhibit these, these type of tendencies, the higher incidence there will be of junior bankers leaving. And banks really don't want junior banks to leave because for the most part, they spend three or four months to get these junior bankers productive and profitable. And then if these junior bankers leave, then they have to take a chance on someone else who might not be nearly as good as the person that, they, that, that left. So in my opinion, I, I'm not sure if I regret. I know that Petsky Prunier at that time was one of the most prestigious boutique firms on Wall Street and in the country. And at this moment, it's probably the same. It's still probably incredibly prestigious. I got along very well with Mike. With John, I barely had any interactions. Sanjay, if I wasn't a nightclub promoter, I think that my relationship with him would have been much better. But um, it wasn't because I always felt that there was a lot of hidden tension. But I learned a lot and I definitely recommend that you should work at a bulge bracket firm like a Morgan Stanley, like I worked at, and then transfer over to a boutique or also to a private equity firm. But I also feel that uh, the one of the benefits of the private equity firms, or rather of the bulge, rather, sorry, one of the benefits of the boutiques are that you don't have to work as hard. So I could have worked if I wasn't involved in nightlife from nine in the morning until around 6.30 or seven at night. 
and usually Sanjay would leave at seven and once he left, I could leave because I was very efficient at getting my work done. The other benefit is you, seal the, you see the entire deal flow. You see the entire deal process. I was on the phone with private equity firms. I would go through the data room to make sure that there were uh, that there was nothing there that we had to that we had to censor. I put together the indications of interest, the letter of intent. I would also get involved and be on the phone when Sanjay would negotiate the purchase prices and set up the auction. So things like that were incredibly valuable because you would see the deal from fruition, from the beginning, from inception, all the way until it completed. That was very very valuable. The other thing is I worked directly with private equity firms. So we worked with Halyard Capital, Seaport Capital, a ton of investment banks. We worked with Goldman Sachs. We worked with probably around five or 10 private equity firms. So it gives you a lot of exposure. I can say that I don't regret it because I definitely enjoy the entrepreneurial life. And I think that working on Wall Street, it requires you to make too much of a sacrifice to work there long term but I'm happy for my experience at Petsky Pernier and I wish that they had seen the best side of me. So I wish that I didn't have to deal with Matthew Crowder at all. I also wish I didn't miss that flight. I also wish that Sanjay was a little bit less petty and didn't get involved in or get, didn't get jealous because he knew that, that, I was a, that I was a nightclub promoter. And there were a few times where I saw Sanjay out. Uh, one time I saw him out and then he saw like a few girls around me and he got like kind of jealous and a few other times. I mean, it was just like kind of weird. Um, but besides that, I mean, that's pretty much it. That, that um, this is probably gonna be one of the, the last videos that I make about my individual experiences in, as an investment banker. I will make future videos about how to get an investment banking job. So I'll go through the questions that they ask you, the specific answers that you should provide, the presentation that you should give, how you should dress, what you should tell them if you don't know the answer to a question. Additionally, if you want free training on how to sell option premium, you can go to beststockstrategy.com and enter in your email address. If you have any questions, then let me know. Let me just make sure that I that I went through everything. So at Pesky Prunier, I'm a boutique on Wall Street. Sanjay was promoting, was making more money as a promoter than I was as an investment banker, and that bothered them. Sanjay, okay. I, um, San Francisco, I talked about how I missed the flight, how I have problems with Matthew Crowder. Also, oh, the last thing is, I was able to meet some really cool people when I was working at, at Petsky Pernier. So I met Michael Astoria, who is now the CEO of Am Pizza. He is very young, he's probably only around three or four years older than me, and he's probably worth around 50 or 100 million dollars. He's a very successful entrepreneur. and. I met a lot of those type of people and it actually paid dividends because Michael Astoria actually owned a nightclub called Corio, C-O-R-I-O in New York City. So ironically, I worked with him at Corio after I left CI, after I worked Petsky, uh, Petsky Prunier. So it was funny because I helped him sell his company, which was Innovation Ads, while I was at Petsky Prunier. And then once I left Petsky Prunier, he hired me as a consultant for Corio. So, Things have a way of circling back and you help one person do one thing where you maximize the purchase price of their company and then they pay you on the back end by working together at their club. So, you know, successful people and are always going to have multiple sources of income, whether it's running companies, owning restaurants, owning lounges, people just enjoy that thing, enjoy that. And I think one of the main problems with Wall Street is that very few bankers actually enjoy Wall Street. They don't enjoy their job because it requires so much sacrifice. You have to dress up in a suit. You have to always be professional. But then the way that these people are acting when no one's watching is very different from the professional persona that they portray when everyone's watching. There were numerous times at CIBC War Markets where kids were addicted to Adderall, where they were snorting cocaine in the, in the back. A lot of the managing directors were cheating on their wives. They were alcoholics. And this is something that you would never see if you took everything at face value, but when you scratch behind the surface or below the surface, because these people had to sacrifice so much and they pretty much sacrifice all of their individuality and they sacrifice their life, all their time, their 20s and their 30s, they have to develop negative coping mechanisms, which are very disastrous and very harmful and almost poison to their soul. 
And I saw this all the time in investment banking, specifically with directors and managing directors. And that's one of the main reasons why I recommend that even if you make less money initially, even if you're making 20 or $30,000 when you're 20 years old, if you find something that you actually enjoy, you should invest 100% of your time because you don't wanna get involved in something that you don't enjoy. The effects and negative effects of working at a job that you don't enjoy are very insidious. It will eat away and grate away at your humanity and at your soul, and you'll end up developing very negative coping mechanisms that are going to hurt you in the future. So like I said before, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm here to help you and I appreciate your attention.